Emergency meeting. Researchers hold an emergency meeting in response to the mining accident. After some discussion, they decide to use an artifact for the rescue operation. Ah. Here is a brief summary of the situation. The incident occurred at the mining site seven kilometers away from the village. There was an accident in which seven civilians were buried in a tunnel 200 meters below ground level. The time of accident was approximately four hours ago. The security team is currently inspecting the mines with a specialized scanner. Who would have thought that the mines could collapse? So, sorry, we were in a rush to meet the deadline. I'm the leader of the development team, so I sh should take responsibility. Of course you should. M Mr. Ilya. Miss Leon, how do you plan to take responsibility? Uh, um, about that. Mm. Eh, only words. That won't do. Do you want to know a good way to take responsibility? Go up to the victims' families and do a naked kowtow while begging. It's all my fault. Uh, I, I see. I'll go right now and... Excuse me, what are you saying? Yeah, it's so scary. Can't even joke around. Joke around, sir? Can't you see that we're in the middle of a conference? Sir, you're so mean to me. Call me by my name, says Jan. I told you not to call me that. Sai, please leave. What? I just got here. I told you to leave. I'm sorry, I won't be a distraction, I promise. By the way, why is Miss Sizz leading the discussion? Where did Mr. Klein go? The executive manager has entrusted me with this case. I see, laid back as always, that fellow. Is this guy, Ilya, unpleasant douchebag just like the rumors? Oh, and you must be... The super underqualified, the embodiment of nepotism. Chio chan nice to meet you. What did you just say? Ignore him, Chiyo, it's a waste of time. Anyway, this accident is not the fault of the development team, so there's no need to worry. This is a safety accident that could very well happen in reality. Objectively speaking, the negligence of the field workers was the greatest factor. So for now, let's think about a solution rather than judging responsibility. M Mrs. According to protocol, we should not be helping the civilians. We decided to interfere as little as possible after all. However, in this case, the civilians do not have the technology to rescue the trapped people. If this was real life, the accident would just end with deaths, but the people aren't even allowed to die. Uh, allowed to die? That wasn't a joke, by the way. A fate worse than death. That phrase exists for a reason. Virtual avatars cannot die, but they can still feel pain. It's obvious if you think about it, pain is a form of stimuli, and erasing pain will hinder your sense of touch. True, the solution to that is the protector. But the protector is not omnipotent. It can relieve the pain, but it cannot completely erase it. Being buried alive is probably the worst case scenario. The entire body is crushed, so it is impossible to lift a finger, and the dirt will fill your lungs when you try to breathe. The accumulated pain will soon exceed the limits of what the protectors can prevent. You would faint due to the unbearable pain, then wake up, then struggle and faint again, then wake up again. It's truly hell on earth. Eek! That's really interesting. It's like the paradox of immortality, isn't it? Researchers happen to be very interested in the subject. We could even write a thesis about it. Yeah, to be honest, aside from the morality part, Huh? Hey, don't make me empathize with you. But why can't the pain be completely erased? With our current technology, I think it would be easy to separate the pain from other sensory functions. Mr. Ilya, you said you wouldn't be a distraction. Cut me some slack. I think this is still in line with the topic. Wouldn't it be comfortable if there was no pain? For example, instead of waiting for the elevator, I could just jump out the window and land on the first floor. Because of people like you. 
Uh, me? As you said, Mr. Ilya, it's certainly not impossible to implement such a feature. However, pain is a valuable warning signal from the body. Without pain, people would do such risky actions without a second thought. Imagine living in that state for hundreds of years and then going out into the real world. What do you think would happen? Oh, I think I would jump out just like usual and then, oof, immediately regret it. Let's be careful not to confuse the two worlds, everyone. It says, how do you suppose we rescue the people without further casualties? Just dig through the ground and pull them out? It would be dangerous to disturb the ground. One wrong move and the tunnel could collapse further, causing the rescue team to become trapped as well. Uh, um, I think... I think what we can do right now, the protector, uh, the protector level. I'm sorry, can you speak louder, please? But protector level, we should raise it, I think. The protector level? Um, if we raise the level to maximum, they should feel less, less pain. What? You can change the protector strength? Eek! Y yes, in most cases, it is set to around medium. Does that mean we can turn it off? It's possible, but we, we probably shouldn't. Mr. Ilias, please stay quiet. Geo, do you think there would be a meaningful difference in raising the protector level? Hmm, I don't know. As you said, the protector is not omnipotent. Even if we were to raise the protector strength, it wouldn't completely block the pain. Their protector is surprisingly useless. Who could have expected people to get buried alive? From what we've gathered, it seems like raising the protector levels won't accomplish much as long as the people are still trapped. I propose we try using the power of an artifact. Artifact? Miss Leon, do you know any artifacts that can aid in the rescue operation? Um, a portal gun could help. Warp to their side of the wall, maybe. But but the underlying risk of collapse wouldn't be addressed. And we should probably create a new one. Is it possible to create an artifact that can harden the terrain so it doesn't collapse? Yes, I'll make it as quickly as I can. What's this artifact thingy? It's my first time hearing about it. An artifact is a special tool that can defy the laws of physics within this world. It utilizes the creative functions of the game system that still remain as dummy data. Ah, so it's like the food tray in our kitchen that restocks food whenever we close and open the lid. That sounds convenient. Let me make one too. You cannot. Artifacts can only be created by authorized personnel in the development lab. It's a tool that must only be used in serious situations. Eh, what a shame. Don't you think so too, Chio-chan? Yeah, shame. Huh, huh, don't ask me. Still, if you had such a versatile tool, wouldn't it be possible to commit a perfect crime with it? A murder trick not even the best detectives could solve. Murder, what are you saying? I think a perfect crime would be difficult. There are certain restrictions on what you can create. For example, you can't create something that can control or harm others. Even if you were to commit crimes using such a tool, there would probably be unnatural traces of... Miss Leon, no need to make a serious reply. Anyway, I'll leave the artifact to the development team, is that okay? Uh, of course, I'm partially responsible for this case, so... Uh, I'll try my best. Good to hear. Please contact me as soon as you're ready. I will send to the security team right away. That is all for today's conference, everyone. Stay alert in your respective positions until the artifact is ready. Mm-hmm. I'll notify Clan as well. And Mr. Ilya, please stay here for a moment. Hmm? Me? There's something we need to discuss. The others may now leave. Uh, thank you. I'll keep you updated. Okay, see you later. What did you need to discuss, Mrs. Jan? Could it be, are you going to confess? I'm looking forward to it. Sigh, how many times do I have to tell you? Do not call me that. Mr. Ilya, about that murder trick, what were you insinuating? Do you have plans to kill someone? Is that it? Hey, come on, I was just joking. Last night I was reading a mystery novel that was popular a few decades ago, and I got a bit carried away. Joke? 
Mr. Illy, I, I already told you countless times, come in with a serious attitude. If you keep making those kind of comments... But it's boring. The Ark Project already succeeded when we all made it into the virtual world. How about we just ditch the strict attitude and have fun? What did you just say? Huh? The Ark Project already succeeded? Mr. Ilya, why do you think we're living here? Well, countless people out there are struggling to survive in cheap cryonics without any evidence that they will ever wake up again. The responsibility I feel towards those people, it haunts me. Whenever I eat, whenever I rest, I even have trouble sleeping at night. Have you ever thought about that responsibility even once? You should at least know that our project carries the weight of billions of lives. But why so serious? I wasn't slacking off or anything. Never. Never act like that in front of me again. If I see that attitude one more time, you'll be dismissed from your position. Is that clear? Uh, alright, alright. I won't do it anymore, Sniff. True, Mr. Ilya. We've all worked day and night on this project to get to this point. Of course, I am aware of your contributions in remodeling the underground shelter and designing various facilities. However, that does not mean your job here is done. Until the catastrophe ends, until we wake up everyone out there waiting for us, the ARC project is not over. I'm sorry for getting angry all of a sudden. But I think researchers should set a good example. Especially for those in senior positions like you, Mr. Ilya. One day, that carefree attitude could really come back to bite you. But what you see, Miss Sis, I admit I've spoken too carelessly, but even I can distinguish what is important. I share that same sense of responsibility. Why we must save humanity, why we must make the art project a success. And you should act accordingly. I'll be keeping a close eye on you from now on. Please do not disappoint me, I'll be heading off now. Uh, okay, see you soon. Ah, Mrs. Sis. What's everyone doing here? A watch party? Do you all have nothing to do? N not at all. Hmm. The damage records. Frozen world, a chaotic situation involving people who have regained their memories. Klein decides that the project can no longer proceed normally and freezes the virtual world. Ah. Open the door, you bastards. Sir, I brought the cutter. They're dead meat now. I'm gonna tear your limbs off when I catch you. Klein, how long is this gonna take? We don't have much time. Almost there, just a little more. System. Activating emergency freeze system. Three, two, one. Quickly, quickly. No, no, charge in. One, two. Emergency freeze system ready. Emergency freeze complete. Did it work? I think so, since there's no sound outside. Aha! Phew, that was close. We are safe for the time being. We really could have died. Did you get hurt anywhere? Nope, I'm the Legendary Phoenix, after all. A potion that ignores the loop and restores lost memories. I've never even heard of it. How did that guy even make such a thing? It should be impossible to do it within this virtual world. It must have been set up before entering this world. Also, that person knows about the emergency free system, judging by how people were sent to this exact location. 
I have no idea how the information was leaked, though. At least we got here in time. Imagine what could have happened. Foo. What are we going to do now? The Ark is completely frozen except for us two. Looping is out of the question. Dark Project, it seems like it's over. The Project continues as it is. Continue by ourselves? Of course, the ultimate goal of the Project is to survive within this virtual world until their outside world becomes habitable. Everyone is frozen, but still alive. All we need to do is wait until the grand catastrophe is over. But our life inside this world... It seems like our secondary goals have to be abandoned for now. Given the circumstances, it's not worth taking the risk to fix it. Our best course of action is to safely complete the project and save the other people once the catastrophe is over. Just a little delay could cause the deaths of countless people outside. Kind of been wanting to ask something ever since we got into this mess. What is it? Why aren't you using the master program? If you use the master program, we could solve the loop issue, the memory issue, and everything else. We could just pretend this disaster never happened. I will not use the master program. Why? Didn't you make it specifically for times like these? If you're not going to use it even after we've reached this point, why did you even bother making it? I created the master program for cases in which the ARC project is unable to continue. You've deviated from the original course, but it's still possible to achieve the end goal of the project. There's no need to use the master program for now. But... Phoenix, using the master permissions is like wielding a double-edged sword. Its power is so extreme that it must only be used when there is no other option. Even if we wanted to use it, there's no guarantee that I could obtain the master permissions due to the strict procedure. Procedure? Do you mean the vote? Precisely. Only those who are supported by a large number of people can obtain the master permissions. I don't really understand that, either. You created it for an emergency, so why did you make the requirements so strict? And besides, you're the leader of this project, so wouldn't everyone vote for you? I doubt it's as simple as that. Did they ever tell you, before I entered this virtual world, I had a lot of worries? What kind of worries? Even after entering the virtual world, would I still hold the same convictions? What? I was worried that I would change my mind after staying in the virtual world for a long time. Maybe I could decide that I never want to go out to the real world, for example. You of all people. People change their minds all the time. If anything like that happens, I myself would become a big threat to this project. To prevent such a scenario from happening, I set up a vote system. If I ever betray the project or something else happens, the most trusted person can become the master in my steed. Hmm. No more mentions of the master permissions. We won't need to use it for the foreseeable future. Anyway, are the cryogenic pods ready? Almost, but why did you want me to turn them on? Because we need to freeze ourselves as well. Ah, I see. We need to freeze... What? Hmm. Only a warden. Following Klein, Phoenix decides to enter cold sleep until the global cooling phenomenon is over. However, unexpected problems arise. Phoenix, are you ready? Yep, anytime. Dull a room with a long array of human-sized capsules. This is a freezing room designed as an emergency shelter. I await my time here like a newborn baby in an incubator, my small and pretty body curled up inside a cryogenic pod. This cryopod looks the exact same from when we entered the virtual world. Our real bodies are in cold sleep, but our virtual avatars are also going into cold sleep. A dream inside a dream. Isn't there an old movie about this? Phoenix, are you really okay with this decision? If you want to stay awake, I'll gladly stay awake too. 
No, there's no knowing how long it's going to take, and we don't have much to do either. Let's hurry up and pass the time so we can see the Earth again. We have a duty to wake up the outside people, right? You're really catering to my needs. And truly grateful to have someone like you by my side. Hey, you're giving me chicken bumps here. Well, anyway... Let us sleep. See you later. Booting cryogenic pod number two. Notice the cryogenic pod will automatically initiate defrosting once it detects a change in the external environment. Once you are woken up, please stay calm and follow the voice instructions. Aha, I look forward to when we wake up. The next time I open my eyes would probably be after a very long period of time has passed. This is very different from the virtual world I was hoping for. But if we can see the real world that much more quickly, maybe it's not so bad after all. Module configuration is complete. Initiating freeze process. Unable to freeze. Error code 1412. Freeze process terminated. Huh? Ouch. Oh, what? Why is it not working? Klein, are you? Yeah, Klein seems to be sleeping. Then why only me? What's going on? I was taken aback by this unexpected situation, but I decided to stay calm and do what I could. Yeah, yeah it could just be a temporary issue, or the pod could be broken. Let's try again in a different pod. Unable to freeze, error code 1412. Freeze process terminated. Hmm, unable to freeze, error code 1412. Freeze process terminated. Please work, dammit. What's going on? The other pods are not working either. I can't I freeze for crying out loud. Well, I have plenty of time, so there's no need to rush. However, as a researcher, I cannot tolerate a failure to identify the cause when a problem occurs. Right, I'll figure it out no matter what. I don't know too much about the pods, but there should be documentation somewhere. Ah, found it. Error code 1412. Avatar info mismatch. Ah. Everything made sense now. The reason my client succeeded and I didn't. I see, the avatar was the issue. I guess there's no choice. I don't want to do it, but I have to go back to my original form. Wait, is that even possible? The device is in the control center. The control center is probably damaged from all the riots. In a panic, I spread my brilliant shining wings to gracefully flutter towards the control center. Ack, I knew it. The control center was already demolished and burnt to crisp. The people must have swept through it while we were activating the emergency freeze system. This is bad. I can't go back to my original form, which means I can't freeze. If we loop, that would fix the control center, but it would unfreeze everyone else. I don't know if we can survive a second time against them. What should I do? Should I wake up Klein? But I doubt Klein can do much about this issue. Rather, he would try to stay awake with me if he realizes that I'm unable to cold sleep. Klein would be forced to pass the time awake because of me. Forget it. I shouldn't cause trouble for him. That's right, this is my problem, and I'm the one who should deal with it. A moment ago, Klein told me that I'm always catering to his needs. But I feel the opposite. Klein is the one who's always looking after me. And I would have never come to this far if it wasn't for Klein. 
he is my savior, after all. Well, it's all good. Actually, I was a little hesitant to freeze in the first place. Playing alone has always been my specialty. There is plenty of time, so let's play to my heart's content. Klein, just take a good rest for now. I'll be protecting the Ark in your stead. Ah. Need two more. Changed world. Lucy's old diary. An old and tattered diary. Lucy's thoughts and feelings are recorded inside. The weather is clear. It's my first day at the Ark. Today, Azara introduced me to the other investigators. As Leon said, the entire team was excited to hear that we had found the time shade. All of them were quite unique in their own way, but they all seemed to be good people. April. The weather is clear. Today the villagers showed me around the Ark. They showered me with presents, calling me the Girl of Prophecy. It was a bit awkward, but I felt happy. I think the Arkers have high expectations for me. I feel like I've been burdened with something massive. The weather is cloudy. It's my fourth day at the Ark. Some of the enthusiastic members told me to start packing for the journey ahead. But I'm afraid. Afraid to go down to that dark and damp twisted land. I know I have to go, but I don't really want to leave the Ark. Rain is pouring. The departure has been postponed due to bad weather. To be honest, I'm glad it rained. I don't want to go down to the Twisted Land. I want to live comfortably inside the Ark. Significant pages after this are empty. December 14th. The weather is very clear. It's been a while since I came to the Ark. Tomorrow, we set out on a journey to find the remaining time shades. To be honest, I'm still scared, but I have decided to trust everyone. The investigation team needs my help. That's why I have to set aside my own fears. Everyone's been helping me since I came here, so now it's my turn to do whatever I can to repay them. I'm not alone. We're all in this together. With their help, I'm sure I can overcome any challenge. The diary ends here. Old journal number one. A journal that seems to have been used for a very long time. The author is presumed to be a czar. At first, it contains notes about Lucy, but the later entries are focused more on self-reflection. Run one. The first run is so far so smooth. I am running a memo to check a variety of variables that can happen during the mission. Lucy is probably asleep at the starting point by now. I might be able to see her at the Twisted Line around noon tomorrow. No hard feeling on her. This is what Lucy wanted. Run 2. Right after the loop, I am teleported to the Master's room. It must be my designated starting point. I cannot do anything except go out to the Ark from this spot. The Program Master is sleeping for eternity inside the crystal. Seriously freaks me out every time I see it. Run 4. No significant change has happened to Lucy yet. It is the fourth run, but it is hard to take Lucy to the Twisted Land. It took four days for the last run, but it took over a week this time. I have brought Lucy down to it somehow, but she got scared at the end. She does nothing. Different from what I've expected, maybe she doesn't like the fact that she is the girl of prophecy and the savior of the world. Lucy keeps trying to evade her responsibility and run away from it. Why is that? I can't understand her. Lucy's a hero, doesn't she want to be a hero? Does she prefer to become a kid rather than a hero? I would have tried so hard to save the world after accepting the Grand Destiny if I were Lucy. Run 9. I talk with the investigation team once in a while in ARC. Usually you repeat the same conversation every loop. It is interesting how they reply with a new pattern depending on my reaction. There is one new fact that I have noticed. The investigation team regards their past memory as a dream. Phoenix told me that the past memory, though it is incomplete, 
and they feel like it is a dream. You told me not to worry about it since it wouldn't cause a big contradiction, but I should keep that in mind just in case. Run 14. I feel a particular will from Lucy. Lucy constantly questioned her mission to run the clock tower and save the world. She started to say yes from some point. Lucy is changing for sure. We will be able to complete this world without a problem at this rate. Lucy's change made me more motivated to go down to Twisted Land. Run 46. You finally defeated the Joker at the Bloody Park. You got defeated after being surrounded by horses and clockwork dolls right after that. What a shame, Lucy could have gone further if she got luckier. Lucy is getting better day by day. I was worried at first, but the repeated experiences are indeed stacked inside her subconscious mind. This feels fresh. I get happy whenever Lucy gets better. I shouldn't be too motivated, though. This is just a part of the game. My purpose is... Still, I feel better than I've expected. Run 167. We are finally picking up how to use the skills correctly. Illusion swords can be applied in endless ways. More incredible moves might be possible if I do this right. It isn't just Lucy who is growing. I am getting more substantial as well. I don't know how long it has been to feel this level of satisfaction. But I should remember now, everything here is fake. I should accept this is a fake world, even if it feels so real. Run 300. It's been a while since I left a record. I have an idea what is messing with my mind. I have a mission, an important mission, that the Program Master entrusted to me. Since, I don't want to go against it. But, is it what I really want? If so, am I only living on for that purpose? Is it okay for me to live like this? I don't have an answer for it. Perhaps I won't be able to answer it for the rest of my lifetime. I wish I was a czar of the Ark Investigation Team. That way, I wouldn't have to think about it anymore. Hmm. Okay, so we are up to everything. And the replay is just all of the cutscenes. Obtain the Summer Twilight DLC and Progress the DLC Story. These are all just the friendships. 